Hey, what's up you guys? Samantha Azari here. This is my second video in my series about my trip to Siege. If you missed the first one, go ahead and get that one in the link down below. It gives you a little bit of explanation of what I was able to pick up. So the purpose of this video is I showed up to Siege with a fairly small budget. Not very much, but I also showed up with some trade items. And what this video is going to show is how I went to Siege, literally lost my mind, sold all my stuff, traded, I was on a crazy high, and I walked away from Siege without spending any of my own money on the games I picked up. So let's go ahead and go through the journey of how I did this. Let's get started. So my initial budget was $120 of my own money. I showed up to Siege with Mario Strikers, CTR Racing, Parasite Eve 1 and 2, a PVM monitor, and Gotcha Force. And I did manage to do trades, sell some of it, do partials, and I ended up in the green, and I want to go through that journey just a little bit deeper. So one of the first things I do when I get into Siege is I see a Donkey Kong VHS tape and Hyrule Warriors and I end up paying $18 for the bundle. I then wander over to a booth where I make my very first trade for Parasite Eve 1 and 2. I get $170 in store credit. So at this point we're only $18 down. In that booth I managed to get the Ocarina of Time, Mario Golf for the GameCube, 007 for the N64 and Kirby Avalanche, leaving about $5 on the table, but at that point there was nothing else I was wanting to get. So I ended up finding this booth with a little bit of toys, six for five, and ended up spending $15, leaving me at $87. Hyrule Warriors for the Wii U was another one I was waiting on, $10, now I'm down to $77. I picked up Ren and Stimpy for $12.50, leaving me at $64.50. Came across these beautiful displays for Mario, Origami King, and Animal Crossing for $40, which now we're hurting, guys. We're at $24.50 and it was time to go watch the panels. And no sales have been done yet. I have only been able to trade Parasite Eve 1 and 2, and I have yet to sell anything. And one of the sales that I had pending was banking on their ability to be able to sell some of their stuff. So stay tuned. Now, you may be wondering, how do you sell a PVM monitor? And for those who don't know what that is, it's a professional video monitor, which might as well just be called a big ass old TV. These monitors are very big and they have all of these specialty things that they can do and it really takes a special person to want this. So not only do I need to find somebody who is interested in this item, but is willing to pay a moderate amount of money to take it home. Now, I did not want to come home with this thing. I lugged it all the way to South Carolina. That thing was massive. So I did lug it around. I even tried showing it off at Pinky's Bar. I showed Retro Rick. I was telling everybody about it. And eventually we run into this booth and it's a nonprofit organization called Save the Machine. And these people display PVM monitors around for people to play with and enjoy. And they're not selling them. And when I asked them if they were possibly interested in buying my PVM monitor, they said they were not. However, people have been asking all day about their PVM monitors and they were kind enough to not only let me bring my monitor in, but to set it up so that people could play with it and they put a sign on it saying PVM for sale. So big shout out to Save the Machine. I will link their channel down below. They, none of this could have happened without them. So after my monitor is sitting out there, the guy has my number and he says, hey, I'll text you if anyone's interested. I had a couple of people interested, but really at that point, nothing. So I was going to continue going to some panels and just kind of wait it out. After GameCube Galaxy finished his panel, he was actually my first buyer for my, one of my products, which was Gotcha Force. And you really need to check out his video on how he was getting that and what he was trading. Now, I was asking what I thought was a fairly fair price, and he actually wasn't able to make all of the sales that he thought he was going to, because he had some very niche special editions. So I wanted this game to go to somebody who was really going to cherish it and not just flip it and resell it and just not care about it. So I ended up accepting the deal of $300 plus the two special editions so that I could go around the con and see if I could trade them because I'd had pretty decent success by this point. So the first little whiff of drama. I'm about to sell Octoplath Traveler. I'm walking around, people are throwing some numbers that I'm pretty comfortable with. I'm trying to find booths that have stuff that I want. I've been eyeing a Pokemon Stadium. 
and the guy opens it it's got this beautiful book it's got a coin and honestly i debated possibly keeping it for my own personal collection even though i'm not a big octopath traveler fan however it, there wasn't a game in it and it's nothing to do with gamecube galaxy i must have just completely misunderstood what are the dreams that that you um you had you you misunderstood i was like hey man there's no game he's like yeah i thought you knew that it was it's just like the special stuff inside of it and i was like oh no i'm not gonna be able to trade this without the game so we meet up and you know he feels bad and i feel bad because i misunderstood and he thought i understood that it, there was no game and he ended up just giving me a hundred dollars and taking that back so now we're at four hundred dollars plus a special edition fire emblem that was part of the trade that is complete and sealed after this little misunderstanding he gives me a hundred dollars i give him the special edition back and i've got fire emblem a like 30 year edition sealed copy and $400. So now we're at $424.50. And immediately while I'm at that booth right in front of us where we're talking about this, they have a copy of Pokemon Black for I believe it was like $125.77, something, something like that. And I ended up paying $120 for it, leaving us at $304.50. You have to understand guys, this all happened extremely fast and I typically don't have people filming for me, so I'm using just some B-roll that I have, and I don't have a lot of footage of all this happening. I had the Fire Emblem 30 year edition. I ended up immediately taking that to a booth that had the boxed N64 uh, controller, and I ended up trading that for $90 credit. I also picked up Mario Party 3 for $40. So now we're at $264.50. Then it happens, you guys. I get that text message saying, hey, I think someone's interested. They'll meet you after the panel you're in. It was a meeting of two o'clock and I didn't know who it was. So we go and we run into none other than a guy that I was actually talking to in the line before we went into the con. He's interested in this PVM monitor. Game Central Station is his channel and I'll link that down below. It might be in his next video, but he's also doing some siege stuff as well. So we're standing there and he's interested and I do not want to take this thing home. You guys, I don't want to take it home. And Honestly, we looked up comps on this thing. I mean, if I really pushed, I could easily get probably like $800 for this thing. But the interest really wasn't there, surprisingly. And so I ended up making a deal for $260 cash and a sealed copy of Chrono Trigger DS for trade. So now we're at $524.50 for cash. And remember, we started with $120 out of that ATM. And now I'm in the green. So just like all the other parts of the story, I immediately take that sealed copy of Chrono Trigger DS because I am not a sealed collector. If I have sealed games in my collection, it's because I bought them, intended on playing them, and then just haven't gotten around to them. So I immediately take it to a booth where they have a 2DS XL. I've been wanting one forever. And he gives me $150 in-store credit. I give him 80 bucks, and I am now a new proud owner of a 2DS XL. So after that trade of $150 in-store credit, and the $80 cash, I'm at $444.50. I ended up being able to pick up an awesome N64 display light for $25, and he gifted me a stand as well. And I was also able to pick up a copy of an N64 game for my friend that he was looking for. So after, after that 50 bucks, $394.50. Day one is complete. My head was spinning. I went into the hotel room, Retro Rivals was there, and I was like, what just happened? I was non-stop trying to sell my stuff, trying to trade it, trying to get stuff that I wanted, the killer, not the filler. I was overwhelmed and overjoyed and honestly, in a blink of eye, I didn't even know what happened. But I had all this loot and some extra money. Like, this is what it's about, guys. Like, retro collecting and buying stuff is kind of a pain in the ass these days. Everything costs so much. But lucky for me, I've been able to establish my co uh, collection early on and I now have the ability to take things that I no longer feel I need in my collection and trade it for something I really want. And honestly, that makes me very blessed. So at the end of day one, we ended up at $394.50 and remember, we started with $120. So we're doing pretty good so far and I've unloaded almost everything I brought to the con with the exception of Mario Strikers and Crash Bandicoot Racing. So let's talk about day two. Now there's something you have to understand about day two. We drove all the way up to South Carolina. We had a seven and a half hour drive ahead of us. So we could only stay at the con for two hours. So let's see what I got. I ended up getting this massive Kirby figure for $45. 
So now we're at $349.50. I ended up getting an Animal Crossing sign for $18, a Mario and a Bowser display for $20, and then I ended up buying Mario 3D World for the Wii U, not because I don't own it, but I wanted to give a copy to Retro Rivals. So now we're at $301.50, still in the green. And then I come across one of my holy grails. Pokemon Stadium in the box. This is so clean and at this point, um, I had not pulled all of that money from the sale because the PVM monitor was through a Venmo. So in my pocket, I only had $142 and the guy took it. So after that 142, we're at 159.40. Still in the green. This was an amazing day. Remember guys, when you're at conventions, keep track of your money. I was running around, I had stuff in my pockets, I was not paying attention, and I thought I had lost $10. Up until I was making this video, and then I realized that I forgot to document that I bought an Xbox game from Retro Wolf 88's booth for $10. So for a while, I thought I had just dropped $10. So be careful with your money, guys. That's a pro tip for me. So we're at the end of the convention with $149.50, and I still have my two games left to trade. I end up trading those into a booth for, I believe it was like $20 credit where I get two blankets and a Kirby Amiibo that I ended up already owning, but that's all right. Overall, I had a blast at the convention and I had even more fun kind of trading and, and dealing with people. And honestly, it kind of reminded me of my middle school days when I used to trade my lunch money for video games. So I had a lot of fun. So we had $120 pulled, sold, got your first with trade for 400 plus trade, then the PVM monitor for 260 plus trade. That's a total of $780. Whoa! Now, I spent a bunch of it. And really, in retrospect, if you think about it, this Parasite Eve 1 and 2, I think I ended up paying uh, probably close to 200 So honestly, that was part of my money. The PVM monitor was a gift. Gotcha Force was a gift. And CTR Racing, I think I bought for retail, so probably like 40 Mario Strikers, I remember getting that at a garage sale for fairly cheap, so really, did I get it for nothing? No, but I thought it was fun that I showed up with only a set amount of money from things that I had bought previously that I was able to bring in. So take that with a grain of salt, but I thought it was a lot of fun because it took me a little while to realize that I had left the con in the green. Now. Not really, because gas and hotel. But it was a lot of fun going through all of this and trying to kind of look back on what I did and remember all the trades. It happened all so fast. I mean, you guys, <laughs> I have an illness. So we spent a total of $630.50 on games with a lot of that being supplemented from the things that I was trading. And then all of the trade value, I believe was like in the 400 range. Give me a minute. Total trade was $425.50. So leaving the con with a little bit of extra money, good good amount of trade. You know, I was, I was pleasantly surprised. Now, some people might feel like I did things too low or I got rid of them too fast, or maybe I shouldn't have negotiated, but honestly, I'm happy. I came home with things that I really wanted to add to my collection, and I think it was a win-win overall. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been enjoying uploading videos, and after Siege, I really feel like this new fire under me to do YouTube a little bit more consistently. But remember guys, there's a pixelated world waiting out there for you.